Hey everyone. Today in physics, we're going to be learning about our new unit called forces, in which we'll be learning how to use the force. Not necessarily in the same way that you're seeing in these Star Wars memes, where you can see that they're using telekinetic abilities to knock people over and do other silly things. There is some reality, though, to the force as it is in Star Wars, and that is that forces allow things to be pushed or pulled in some direction. But it doesn't work the way it does in Star Wars. In our universe, force works a little bit differently. So what are some examples of the forces that we'll study in this class? Well, the most common type of force is called a contact force, and that could be any situation where two objects are making physical contact and you're able to push or pull something. We'll do experiments in class that involve springs and friction and drag, and we'll be knocking objects into each other all the time, and those are generally called applied forces. But then the weirder parts of physics are when there are forces where two objects don't need to be touching in order to interact. For example, magnetism, electricity, and gravity. So what are the concepts that we need to get started in this unit? Well, we have to become familiar with a little bit of physics vocabulary as it relates to forces. So I'm going to show you a table of information here. I'll tell you about the four properties we're going to be discussing today, the symbol for each of them, what it means, the definition, and of course the unit that we measured in. The first one is force, obviously. The symbol for a force would be F, usually capital F, and it's defined as a push or a pull applied to an object. The unit that we measure force in is the Newton. You can probably guess what that's named after. It's named after Isaac Newton, the famous scientist. So that's force. You'll need to know a lot about those because the unit is called forces. You'll also need to know about mass, which you may have already learned about in the early parts of the year in physics. Mass is symbolized with the letter M, and it means the amount of matter in an object. The base unit of measurement in the metric system for mass is the kilogram. Next is acceleration. And at this point in the year, you may have already learned a little bit about what acceleration is all about. But as a reminder, it's symbolized with the letter A, and it's defined as the rate at which an object's speed is changing. The unit for acceleration is the meter per second per second, or the meter per second squared. And that's because it's a rate of how quickly you are changing your meters per second every second. Finally, there's this weird property called net force, which sounds like a different version of force, our first term. Net force is symbolized with a capital F and then a subscript NET. This is defined as the total or sum of all of the forces being put onto an object. And again, because it's a type of force, it's measured in newtons. We're going to talk a little bit about what net force means on the next slide. Let's imagine that we're looking at a grassy meadow and someone puts a cardboard box on the grass. Then imagine that a mischievous cat comes up and pushes on the box. Well, we would call this an applied force because the cat is applying a force to the box. So what is the box going to do as a result? Well, the box is going to move in the direction of the force unless there's some kind of opposing force that will try to fight that motion. So think what kind of force exists that could cause that box to not go as fast as it normally would. Well, friction is something that we encounter every single day as we move around and touch objects. And in this case, friction between the box and the grass beneath it is what's going to oppose the cat's push. So these two forces, the applied force and the opposing force, and by the way, opposing means it's in opposition to, it's against, it's rivaling the applied force. It's going to fight it and make it smaller. So these two forces are going to fight, and then the winner gets to determine where the box is going to go. So to talk about these two forces fighting, which is not a term we typically use to describe forces, um, we talk about what would happen if you put all these forces together in a net and you allowed the net to move in whatever direction the winner determined. Well, the winner in this case is going to be the cat because the cat is stronger than friction. And so the net force, or the force that we would get if we put all the other forces in a net and watched where the net goes, the net force would be to the right because that's where the stronger force is pushing. So that's kind of how you can think about the term net force. It's if we put all the forces together in a net, where would the net go? Now there is a formula to help you calculate the net force on an object. It's a pretty simple one. But first, just a reminder what net force is. It's the sum or total of all of the forces on an object. So here's that equation. The net force is equal to the applied force minus the opposing force. So is that what you're going to have to write down if you're ever doing a calculation? Well, no, that's too long, so let's shorten it. This is usually how you'll see this equation written. Net force, or F net, is equal to applied force, or FA, minus opposing force, FO. 
Now it doesn't really matter which type of force you put in which position there, the yellow or green, they could probably be switched out and you'd actually end up getting the same answers. We'll see that later on. Um, but why would it be important for us to calculate the net force on an object? It is, isn't it more important what's actually happening on either side? Well, no, because it's actually the net force on an object, not any of the other ones, that will determine how the object behaves. So that box is going to move according to its net force, which is why it's worth calculating. So here's an example of a problem where you might want to calculate the net force. Anna's parents want her to do chores. Lame. Dad pulls her toward the dirty dishes with a force of 45 newtons. Mom pulls her toward the full garbage can with a force of 55 newtons. What is the magnitude and direction of the net force on Anna? So this question wants to know the amount of force, that's what the word magnitude means, and they want to know in what direction will she be pulled. It's a pretty easy question, but let's make sure we can set up the formula correctly to analyze it. Here's the force that dad is pulling with, 45 newtons towards the right. Here's the force that mom is pulling with to the left, and here's our equation. The net force on Anna is going to be whatever the applied force is minus whatever the opposing force is. Now you can probably tell pretty clearly that mom is going to win, so let's just call her force the applied force, and we'll call dad the opposing force. Plugging in the numbers, we get 55 newtons minus 45 newtons equals 10 newtons, and the direction is going to be to the left because we established that mom's force as the winner is going to be the direction that the net force is traveling in. So usually in your answer for a net force, you want to keep in mind how much force there is and what direction it's going to travel. Because going to the left versus the right makes a big difference when you're driving a car or other types of motion. So let's take this idea and let's apply it to another problem. Um, but first a note, it doesn't really matter which force you call the applied force or which one you call the opposing force. If I had reversed these numbers, if I did 45 minus 55, I would have gotten negative 10, and I would have known that it was still 10 newtons towards mom. So it doesn't really matter which way you input these numbers. So here's our second problem. Everyone knows that bears hate kittens. We all know that. One very strong man has made it his life's mission to make bears upset. He pushes a box of kittens toward a bear cave with a force of 220 newtons. Three panicked bears emerge from the cave to push the box away. Each bear can push with a force of 80 newtons. What is the magnitude and direction of the net force on the kittens? So again, they ask us for the magnitude, so we need to know how much. And they ask us for the direction, so we need to know in what direction the box is going to go. Here's the force that the man is applying to the box. The arrow is pointing in the direction of his force. And here are the three forces that we get and it's 80 newtons from each bear. Even though the problem only said 80 newtons one time, you have to know that each bear is supplying that much force, so that's why there's three arrows there. So how do we figure out who the winner is? Well, let's set up the same formula that we did before, where we say net force equals applied force minus opposing force. And I said before, it doesn't really matter which candidate we put in the category of applied force, um, so let's just put the bears there. So the applied force is going to be all three bears' forces put together, so 80 plus 80 plus 80. All of those forces are going to work in the same direction, so we can just add them up and total them. And then we're going to subtract the 220 from the man because he's going in the opposite direction, so his force gets subtracted. The 80 plus 80 plus 80 equals 240, so 240 minus 220 gives us 20 newtons to the right. So in this case, our, we got a positive answer, just like we did last time, but this time it, mean, this time it meant to the right. Um, so direction isn't always going to be perfectly clear with just positive and negative signs. It really depends on how you're solving the problem. So you should keep track in your mind of what direction is the winner each time. So that was our second problem, and this is a third one that doesn't contain any numbers. It's more conceptual. Ryan Reynolds is doing a spacewalk near the International Space Station, or ISS, in order to draw a dangerous Martian life form away from the other astronauts on board. Thank you, Ryan. To avoid the Martian's deadly lunge, Ryan Reynolds activates his spacesuit's thrusters. His thrusters push him down with twice the amount of force that they push him sideways. Which letter represents the location that the thrusters will push him towards? Is it location A, directly to his left? Is it location E, straight down? Is it C, which is at a 45 degree angle? Or is it B or D, which are kind of in between those options? The correct answer is option D. The double jets that he's got pushing in the upward direction are going to actually push him in the opposite direction, downward. 
So those two on top would push in towards location E. But then there's also that jet to the right, which is going to end up pushing him to the left. Um, that's Isaac Newton's third law of motion, which you will discuss in a future video that says every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So since the jets pushing up are stronger than the jet pushing to the right, there's going to be more downward motion than there will be leftward motion. And so option C would not be correct. Option D is the correct answer there. So there's your conceptual problem. I want to give you one last problem to consider with multiple people pulling on one object. The question is, which team is going to win this game of tug of war? Is it team blue or team red? Well, obviously it depends on how strong each of these people are. So let's assume that at the moment we begin the tug of war game, these are the forces that each of these candidates is putting out. So which team is going to win? Well, it depends on who's strongest, right? So out of these numbers, I see 51 is the biggest number. So the woman on the right is exerting the strongest force on the rope. So wherever the rope goes, that's who's going to determine who wins. And she's the strongest, so I'm guessing Team Red is going to win. But let's actually do the analysis and make sure. Here's our work. The net force is going to be equal to, and hey, check this out. I'm actually doing my math a little bit differently this time because I mentioned before, it doesn't really matter how you put these numbers together as long as you're doing it consistently and in a way where you're mindful about direction. So I'm doing things a little differently here. I'm saying the net force is going to be all the leftward forces from Team Blue plus all the rightward forces from Team Red. So the leftward forces are negative 43 from the woman on the left and negative 48 from the man on the left. I'm making those numbers negative and that means that negative is the leftward direction. That's the way I'm organizing it in this case. That's how I'm showing direction is with that negative number. The rightward forces are 51 from the stronger woman on the right and 37 newtons to the right for the guy on the, right, the uh, red team. So the leftward forces total up to 91 to the left. So I'm calling it negative 91 newtons. And the rightward team, the red team, totals to 88 newtons of rightward force. When you put those together, you end up with a remainder of negative three. And that negative, again, in this case, based on the way I set up the problem, that negative means to the left. So my full answer is the net force on the rope is going to be three newtons to the left. So which team will win the game of tug of war? That is team blue. Congrats, team blue. Team Mystic for life. So that's all you need to know for now to get you ready to start learning about forces. I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.